Okay, let's look at the Clausius Clapeyron equation. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to relate temperature, pressure, and intermolecular forces. So we have a direct correlation between the enthalpy of vaporization of a substance and its intermolecular forces. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the greater the enthalpy of vaporization is going to be. It requires more heat to vaporize the substance because they're pretty stable and being held together pretty tightly with their intermolecular forces. Um, and so temperature affects vapor pressure, which we're representing as P here, our, our P values. Um, and every temperature is going to give a different vapor pressure because kinetic energy, according to the kinetic molecular theory of liquids, is contributing to that vapor pressure um, as well as the intermolecular force strength. Okay, So we've got um, several things to relate. And so vapor pressures, not atmospheric pressure here, vapor pressures are being related before and after with the equation on the right. That's the most used for, um, well, I guess they're both used pretty much um, equivalently, but we can use either one. And then if we plot, we have what is y equals negative mx plus b. So if we're looking, let me space that a little better. Okay, so we can see that our slope here would be negative um, delta H over R on a plot that puts the natural log of pressure versus 1 over T, which would be the independent variable of, of inverse temperature there. Okay, and so we, we would get a nice straight line to be able to calculate enthalpy of vaporization from that plot. So it's very useful in that respect. And then a before and after scenario. Let's do one of the calculations with the before and after scenario um, for vapor pressure. So if we know one before and after scenario, one vapor pressure at a given temperature, we can figure out the vapor pressure at another temperature, okay? So let's heat some water in a closed system. That's called a bomb reactor because it will explode if it's not a good reactor, not, not structurally sound, um, but it's called a bomb reactor. And if we're heating the pressure, what's the pressure going to be on the walls of that vessel at 200 degrees? So um, if the vessel's rated to 12 atmospheres, will it maintain its integrity? And we've got to figure this out, knowing that the vaporization enthalpy of water is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. And so we know a little bit more than we're given in this one because we know that if we're trying to calculate um, pressure after, we could just say, well, what about at the normal boiling point of water? Let me just say one atmosphere. Okay, so one atmosphere vapor pressure is the normal boiling point um, pressure, vapor pressure. And so we could just say one atmosphere, we know negative um, 40.7 already kilojoules per mole over the gas constant. And here, since we've got units of um, kilojoules or joules, we need to have energy units, not liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So there's another version of the ideal gas constant that uses joules per mole Kelvin instead of liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So we have 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Let's go ahead and and change this then, 40,700 joules per mole. Now we can cancel joules and moles on the top and bottom here. Okay, the rest of the, of the Clapeyron equation here, we have to um, consider our pressure, our temperature final first. So our temperature two that goes with our second vapor pressure is 200 Celsius. But that's 473 Kelvin. We have to use absolute temperature, not Celsius. Minus one over the, what's the normal boiling point of water? It's 100 degrees Celsius. So that's what the, when the vapor pressure is one atmosphere is at 100 degrees Celsius. So that's 373 Kelvin. And so when we, let's simplify a couple of these terms here. And so if we do the, um, 
calculation to the right here, we're going to get a negative 0 0.0005 zero five six six eight and that's over kelvin or kelvin to the minus one whatever you prefer there um and i just wanted to do that little part there we're not going to simplify this portion um, from above but i just want to make sure that that when you punch this large fraction um, difference here into the calculator you get the right term there because that is a little bit tricky to input on some of the old models so make sure you're getting that number and do we expect that yeah we expect it because one over a big number is going to give a smaller number than one over a small number which is going to give a big final resultant there after we do our our division so small minus big is going to give a negative number at the end and that's exactly what we get so it's it's expected we're in good shape there and so when we simplify all the way down, we're going to get natural log, after we punch everything in the calculator, we're going to get natural log of P2 is going to be equal to um, 2.775. And so to get rid of our natural log, we raise everything to the E e to the 2.775 and that's going to give and this is lowercase e not cat not capital e this isn't 10 to the this is um the base of logarithm e lowercase e to the 2.775 that should give us 16 atmospheres 16 atmospheres and so no the vessel will explode not a good uh, day for the chemist if you're not paying attention to your vapor pressure. Can't heat it that high without exploding your vessel.